concept of privacy itself as something that adheres to a person that is a right is not something that's part of, uh, of, of universal cultural understanding. Long before we had the inter internet, privacy could also be very limited. Uh, people who lived in small communities where everybody knew everyone's business did not necessarily have a, a particularly high expectation of privacy. And uh, you know, the, the people often wanted to keep secrets and, and what was the relationship between privacy and secrecy? Well, why did people want to have privacy? Well, they wanted to avoid social opprobrium. That could be because they were doing naughty things, or it could be because they were doing unconventional things, or they were doing things that may uh, have offended somebody, or they were just doing things that they thought were nobody else's business. We also concern about, are concerned about privacy, privacy in terms of corporate exploitation. If corporate interests know what we're doing, does that give them an opportunity to exploit us in some way, to make use of what they know about us, to manipulate us, to influence us? whatever, and the other uh, interesting aspect about privacy is its relationship to security. Uh, that some of our information can be used by criminals, and uh, that they could, whether it's the information, the codes to our bank accounts, or uh, information about things that, 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 that we buy, things that, that, uh, that people want to steal from us, where we are. You know, if people can follow us everywhere, if we have our GPS on and people know where we are, or, or people who foolishly announce on Facebook that they're going off to a long holiday, and they said, you're like, why don't you come and rob my house while I'm away? Um, and let me show you this lovely picture of my art collection, which, <laughs> and it's over here, and the dog won't bark if you give him a bone, whatever. Um, and the other concern, of course, is the extent to which a state may use private information to be oppressive. And one of the things I think that is important is, is to understand how, that, that how we see privacy is very much related to this question of how we are governed and how we, who exercises power and how we see limits on it. Many of the things that we think of as being private are private information. Do they still need to be private? Are we vulnerable if they are disclosed? Um, if our health... Uh, uh, details are disclosed. Does that make us vulnerable because we can't get health insurance? Well, maybe not in a country where the regulations prohibit discrimination based on, in offering health insurance based on the situation of, of your health. So it's a very interesting question. What is private? It really depends on a lot of external factors, and these external factors change. Some of them are social mores and norms. Some of them are regulatory constructs that affect the way information can or cannot be used against us. The point I want to make is that when we're talking about access to information, we also have to talk about the, the framework around it. And just because governments may not like access to information requests, it doesn't always mean because they're trying to hide something. They really are disruptive. And we need to find ways. That's why the more open data we can get, the more things that people can simply access on a website without engaging people to put it together, the better it is. And I am not for a moment uh, advocating or supporting hiding or redacting information that has a legitimate public resonance into which people have a right. But one of the problems is that this is an expensive system. And we have to figure out how to make it work in the public interest in ways that are not unreasonably uh, draining on our financial resources. And one of the things we talk about when we talk about protection of privacy, we talk about is there a reasonable expectation of privacy? You know, is somebody entitled to bring an action about breach of privacy because they expected this conversation or this situation to be private? And I think technology is dramatically changing what a reasonable expectation of privacy is. And I think, again, privacy is dead, get over it, um, maybe is the best uh, rule of thumb for anybody in public life who feels vulnerable to having things that they've said uh, repeated. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're saying bad things. It could be things taken out of context. It could be a throwaway line that you make to a friend, uh, but it gets picked up and suddenly becomes something totally different. The key to all of this is strong democratic institutions and the rule of law. You are the key. You and the legislation and the regulations that you interpret, that you apply, you are the answer. There is no answer. We will never come up with a, a, a solution that says, okay, we've got to figure it out now.
And every time we come up with a technological fix for hacking or whatever, criminals will find something else. Uh, people will find other ways of getting around it, so we have to constantly keep doing it. Yes, privacy and access are very important for democracy, but democracy is essential for the protections of privacy and access.